Now we'll say some things about friction in fluids. And by fluids we mean air or water. Fluid is something that's not a solid, something that you move through. And when you move through a fluid, when you move through the air, the air itself offers some resistance to the motion. And the same thing with the water. If you try to push something through the water, the water itself offers resistance to the motion. And that's often called drag. So the movement through a fluid, the air resistance or the water resistance is often referred to as the drag. And this is clearly a situation in which you want to minimize the friction. If you're flying a plane, you have to move it through the air. You want less friction. You want to move it forward as efficiently as possible. So you want to minimize the drag. And cars and trucks also. When you move it at uh, 50 miles an hour, that's a significant speed from a standpoint of air resistance. You don't notice the air resistance at low speeds. When you're walking along, you don't, uh, you don't typically struggle to move through the air, air just at walking, walking speeds. But if you get on your bike and ride, you know there can be significant amount of resistance from the air, especially if you're riding into the wind. And if you stick your hand out of the car window at 50 miles an hour, you can feel a lot of force on your hand. That's from the, from the air resistance. At higher speeds, it becomes more significant. So it's something like a, an airplane moving along at 500 miles an hour. They want to do everything they can to minimize the air resistance because it can be huge if they're not careful. And the way to minimize the air resistance is, to a large extent, due to the shape. The shape of an object greatly affects the amount of drag. So with, um, with boats, they're concerned with the hull shape. And this whole issue of hull design for a boat is, is a big and complicated field. Making a hull that can move a shape, the, shape, the boat the right shape so that it can move through the water efficiently. And cars and planes, they also typically want them to be what we call streamlined. That's one word. A streamlined object is one that is shaped so that it can move through the air efficiently. Now the most efficient shape, it's kind of surprising. The most efficient shape is one with a rounded front. Draw something like this. So something like that. This would be an object that's, that's moving this way. So that's its velocity. It would have, um, the, the front here should actually be a hemisphere, so this would be half of a circle up front, and then it tapers going back. So as it moves through the air, the air has to spread out, and some goes over the top, and some goes over the bottom. And, and specifically, they actually have numbers on this. The most efficient shape to move through the air is a hemispherical front, and then it tapers going back, and the length of the taper is four and a half times the diameter, and they've figured that out. We're not going to do the math for this, though. The calculations for um, fluid friction, for air resistance and drag, are very, very complicated. This would be done in a college-level physics or engineering course, or even beyond, maybe master's-level work. This is very complicated math. So we're just going to look at the concepts now. The reason this shape is, um, is effective and efficient is because it minimizes the turbulence. If you move something through the air, say you have something, just a big square object that moves through the air, and you're, you're pushing it or forcing it through the air this way. The, um, the air has to spread out and go around it. Well, this air gets separated. Some of it gets pushed up and some of it gets pushed down. And as it moves through the air, this air has to come in behind and fill in the gap here. And the air ends up swirling all around back here and this turbulence actually increases the amount of friction. Turbulence makes it harder to move it through the air. So a streamlined shape like this, especially with this tapered end on the back that we're looking at here, minimizes the turbulence and helps minimize the friction. Uh, one example where this comes into play is you've probably seen trucks on the highway. So let me draw a big truck here and it's being pulled along so here's the the tractor this tractor trailer part and this is the the tractor section up front and it's moving this way obviously and they put these things up top here they put this thing up top shaped like this you've seen these things on the top of trucks on the highway and you might wonder what is that that actually helps reduce 
the friction helps reduce the air resistance. And a friend of mine was asking me once, how can that possibly help reduce the air resistance? They put this big thing on the front of the truck that slams into the air as the truck moves forward. How can that reduce the air resistance? Well, here's how. If the truck's moving forward, the air's going to be slamming into the truck no matter what. And if this thing weren't here on the top, the air would be slamming right there into that big flat uh, front section of the trailer part and you, you the air doesn't flow very easily like that and putting um, putting this device up here and that they're typically curved back like that that provides an overall more streamlined shape to the front of the truck more similar to this very efficient design and the air can flow more smoothly across that shape than it could if it were just slamming right into that flat section right there. So adding that actually does reduce the air resistance and that's exactly why it's there. Reducing the air resistance allows the truck to move through the air more easily and that saves gas. It saves fuel so it makes it more efficient by reducing the friction. And um, interestingly this efficient shape that we've talked about this is the shape that a raindrop will take as it falls through the air. If you think of a raindrop falling, you know what they look like. Raindrops typically have that shape to them, something like this. And that's because the, the raindrops are, are liquid. They're, 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 um, they can change shape easily, and they naturally take this shape with the, the rounded front and the tapered back end the forces of the air resistance on the raindrop as it falls those forces push the raindrop into that shape and that's the most efficient shape for moving through the air now it's a little bit different moving through the water um, air is compressible and water is not and the physics of compressible fluids is different than the physics of non-compressible fluids but like I said that's all very very complicated stuff and we're not going to touch the math on that even in even in a high school physics course not just a physical science course but a full-fledged course in physics you wouldn't even touch the math on um, the fluid mechanics there very very complicated stuff but it is stuff that has been worked out is well known and is understood and because of that they're able to design boats and planes and cars to make them move through the air efficiently